on a typical run, uh, we'll have <laughs> pretty much the whole team shooting out of here and taking off on our main takeoffs. Um, so on a normal FBS <coughs> jump, as you guys saw probably as you were coming down, it's only one takeoff. We actually have five set up here so we can actually spread out the riding. So at uh, one point in the show, we have a four wide jump. Um, we've added a little bit to it this year, so we actually have something really cool at the end of the show you guys will see. So we still have a four wide, but we added a little bit to it. But this gives the guys a lot of option as far as you know where they want to jump and how they want to carve the ramp. So a lot of them have different te techniques to it. So um, five ramps here. The landing is actually 32 feet wide, which um, is great for the four wide. If we went any wider than that, we'd uh, have problems because we'd be jumping off the side and stuff. So it's actually really perfect for what we have. Um, the gaps here are actually set at 74 feet. So from, and that counts the top of the takeoff to the knuckle, which is this uh, edge of the landing right here. So 75, 74 feet is our typical uh, main jump, and about 72 is our normal return jumps, which is the ones coming back this way. Um, so that's, that's a lot of air time. Um, they're getting about 45 feet up in the air too. Um, and all that, while all that's going on, they're doing tricks, which are amazing. Uh, to say the least. So, um, on top of retaining all that, their jump memory, their trick memory, they actually have to remember what they're doing at the end of the jump too. So, on any normal FMX show, they're going to jump down, ride back, go in the back, think about their next jump, jump back out, come back in. Uh, on ours, they're going to jump down, turn around, come back up on the main landing, post up, maybe do a fight, go back down, jump left, come back down here. Uh, fight again and then go back out. So there's a lot to remember. Um, so we try to make it easy on them and try to make it as safe as possible. We actually have uh, Mickey Diamond sitting back in the uh, back here. He has a flip card. So every time they come back in, it's a different flip card. It actually tells them the path they have to do and the tricks they have to do on the next jump. Um, so it's, it's a little bit easier. They come back in, they see the note. Oh yeah, I remember. Now they jump, jump down, turn right, come down here, mess around, and then go back out. Um, lots of times we'll actually ask them to remember a couple passes at a time. Uh, Twitch and Mike Mason actually have a, a duet together, they're our two leaders, where they'll go out, they'll have to post up, go down, jump, and then actually they'll stay out here. So they'll just cut the corner here and jump. So they'll actually have to remember two or three passes in a row uh, and remember the tricks they're doing there and where they'll have to post up. So it's all quite amazing. Uh, and we've, we've tried to retain uh, a lot of our great guys because they actually work well together. So. Uh, it is a choreographed show, they have to retain a lot, they have to trust the guys jumping right next to them. Um, it's actually, that's probably the hardest part, um, they've all ridden together a long time so they actually uh, are comfortable working together. Um, in any normal or, or other circumstance, we try to bring in a rider that they've never worked with or never jumped next to, it's complete uncomfortableness. Um, I don't know, even know if that's worth it. Uh, <laughs> What's that? Yeah, so I mean, they, they, they're just uncomfortable uh, flipping next to them too. So uh, there's, there's something to be said about actually flipping straight. Not all of our guys actually flip straight. They, uh, there's some guys that'll take off on this ramp and land on the far right. It's just the nature of how they jump. Um, so it's, it's completely uncomfortable. Um, but most of our guys flip pretty straight. The really straight guys are the guys we put in the four wide pack. You don't want any of that going astray. Um, but they're all completely safe. They go home, they practice what they do here, uh, and then come back out and do it in a show. So, and that's why we have such a long rehearsal process too. We actually uh, we go through all these steps and put them through the show uh, for 14 straight days, so they have muscle memory. They know you know exactly what they're doing, who's jumping next to them at every time. They've come. They've become so comfortable that they'll actually try to reach out and high five guy when they're back flipping in the air. Um, so you'll see a lot of that. Um, uh, another cool thing we have, our quad riders here are, are pretty cool. This year we're actually lighting our quad guy on fire. Um, in the past we've actually lit our uh, two FMX guys on fire. We've actually convinced uh, a couple of our quad guys to go on fire too. So in the show we'll actually have one guy, one quad guy on fire, which is pretty awesome. It's first time I've ever seen it done, uh, first time I've heard of it being done too. So. Uh, Marco Picado is actually going to be on fire. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool how we do it in the show. Colton will be riding out here, Colton Moore. Uh, he'll be riding, he'll go on back. Marco will be all set up looking like him. He'll actually jump out on fire, flip down, come up on the landing with fire on his back, and then come back out. So it's pretty amazing. First time I've ever seen it done. The guys were excited to do it too. We, we do it in a completely 
completely safe manner. We've done it for a few years with other guys. So we know the process, how much protect the bearing, uh, the, the product to put on them so they don't burn. Um, so it's it's pretty neat little thing. Does the flip card say put yourself out when you come back in when you're <laughs> on fire? We actually have that completely covered. So as soon as they get in, they, they get about three or four feet past. We have guys sitting there with the extinguishers all ready to go. Um, also for a safety measure, we have guys down in the corner. So if he jumps down and something's going wrong, we can jump out and put him on fire. So all of our guys have been completely trained to do that. Um, and we've actually run through scenarios where something's going wrong and they have to come out and put him out. How bad is the heat on them? Pretty bad. Um, they don't feel it at all. That's the great thing. So they have, I think it's three protective layers of hoods. Um, and on top of that, they have like a, uh, a sweatsuit like UFC would wear to, to sweat, um, plus the gel that goes on the layering. So um, it's completely safe. Um, we've had them in circumstances where they'll turn around, you know, the wind will be blowing or something. And, you know, it, it gets hot, but they know which way direction to turn and what to do if it gets hot. So completely safe. Um, the gel is actually so protective. You can put it on your skin. Uh, you can dip your hand in it and put a flame torch to it. So it's that protective that you can hold it straight to your hand with the gel on it. And you can't feel it at all. So, uh, amazing stuff. Go try it at home. Yeah, that's that's a cool not, party trick. not giving you guys the tips on how to do it, I'm just idea. telling you that we protect our guy. Good little uh, mention there. Um, so yeah, I'll talk about a few uh, cool new things that we've added to the set too. Um, we've gone with kind of an Asian theme uh, due to our Shaolin in the, in the show. We've tried to kind of mold that around that. Um, you'll see a lot of the bamboo, a lot of the uh, art is uh, Asian inspired. Um, so it's, uh, it's kind of a new, cool new set this year. Uh, we've added something to our portal. In the years past, we've actually just had a door that opens and shut. Uh, we've actually added this platform. So one of the major uh, issues we have with the show is because our ramps are so big, um, it's kind of hard to see everything going on. Um, in normal shows, you know, you get the big floor and you can see everything from end to end. Up here, uh, we try to get as much performance on top of the platforms, which is kind of a performance area. Um, so we've actually built decks down or up here and downstage. Um, for people to actually perform on it and get the performers up off the ground and get them out of the dark areas. So it's kind of a neat thing. So along with that, we've kind of tried to make it uh, friendly for our trials, guys. Trials is kind of a really neat thing. It's it's not very well known, but it's um, they're basically, it's, it's a mountain bike with a motor. It's a very light, nimble thing. Their main thing is to balance and to jump up things that people wouldn't expect. So our trials, guys, at one point during the show, will jump up this it's a rear, rear wheel right on that splatter, right there is what we call it because it actually splatter against it and then tip over it. Um, and another really cool thing that we've added uh, is the stairs over here. So we needed a way to get the performers up, but we also wanted to do another cool way to get the trials guys up. So they actually uh, they climb up these stairs vertical uh, and, and hop up on top. So it's uh, it's pretty steep. Uh, at first they were weren't too hyped on it. They have some trouble with it. I can talk a little bit about pyro too. I, I mentioned earlier we have a lot of pyro in this, so these boxes actually aren't loaded, so that is a good thing. I'm trying to be safe, but nothing's in here. Uh, but you guys will look around the set and you'll see these these boxes here. These are all flame heads. Um, and I believe we have, I want to say 20 flame heads, which is maybe eight more than we had last year. So uh, if you've been to our show, which a few of you have, you can actually feel the heat when this is all going off. We have a scene in the second half, which we call the fire scene. And uh, when it's going off, you actually get warm uh, in the stands, I'm saying. Uh, it's that hot. So um, obviously you can imagine how warm it is out here when the performers are going, it, it gets pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, so when you guys are walking around, you can kind of see all the flame units that we have out here. Uh, we've actually added a different color to the flame units too, so a number of our flame units actually turn blue, which is something cool we've never really done before, but it actually goes with our theme. Uh, the bad side is uh, themed in blue, so it actually matches up with those guys, so pretty cool addition. Um, we've added uh, more lasers to the show too. Uh, we've had uh, some lasers in the past, we actually have blue lasers, um, and if every, any of you have ever seen on YouTube, uh, there's a, a, a fact or an act called Laser Man. Um, which is a laser, laser unit that comes out of the ground um, and this person's actually able to interact with it. We actually have it built into our main landing this year. Uh, so our main uh, evil character, Chakra, actually interacts with this. It's her weapon and she's able to throw around the lasers and interact with the other lasers around the area. So 
another really cool effect that you guys will get to see tonight. So I like telling you guys all this so when it actually comes to the show tonight, you can actually see what I'm talking about and actually uh, comprehend a little bit faster. So hope you guys uh, enjoy the show. Um, is there any questions on the set? Anything I can answer? No? Has anybody done any, like said, we need to do a trip that's absolutely insane, it's crazy. And then you just go, that's, that's too crazy, that's too insane. Yes, uh, th that actually happens a lot. Um, our show is scripted and we stick by a storyline. So on top of that, we have to make sure that the riders land 100% of the trips. If they do something that's completely crazy and they're not guaranteeing that they can land it, it'll completely ruin the show. So we have to keep that in mind. <coughs> um, a lot of our guys do completely crazy stuff. Um, Take Higashino, X Games gold medalist, uh, I think he's defending champ for the past four events. Um, he does what, what's called a double double grab backflip. Um, only three guys are doing it in the world right now. And <laughs> once in a while he'll feel spry and he'll just go out and do it. So I'm hoping he does it tonight. He'll usually do it in the finale when his name is called. So if you guys see it, it's um, he'll actually grab the seat like this during a backflip and extend his feet all the way out. It's pretty much the gnarliest trick we have out here. So uh, make sure you pay attention to that. It's uh, Definitely got to be paying attention. So during roll call, when we actually call out the riders, try to try to catch him doing that. He thinks he's the third to last guy. So. My name is Mike Mason, and I am the leader of the Shadow Warrior team. Awesome. So my first question for you is, does your mother know what you're doing for a living? How does my she mother, feel about this? My mother knows what I'm doing. She doesn't like it, but she does. I mean, she's happy to see me doing what I love. But yeah, it scares her, especially with this stuff. You know, it's one thing to be riding in your backyard by yourself, you know, with a couple friends, but now with all of us jumping four wide, you know, three wide next to quads, and there's just so much stuff going on. She don't, she's not a fan of the show, even though she loves it. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, my mom would not be happy either. So uh, give me a little bit about your background. How'd you get into riding? Um, I got into riding. I got my first bike when I was four years old. You know, my dad was into moto, and mm -hmm. I actually started in the racing scene. I raced for probably 16, 17 years, and then. It was just getting to be a struggle, so I started doing the freestyle stuff, and uh, you know, had a good couple of X Games, and the Nuclear Cowboy Store came up, and this is our fifth year now. Just been doing this; it's been awesome. So, how do you make that transition between competitive and freestyle riding versus a show where it's scripted and where you have certain marks that you have to hit? Yeah, when you're doing a competition or something like that, you're you're more just in your own routine. You know, you know mm -hmm. the tricks you got to do. Where this, we know the tricks we got to do, but now we got to pay attention to where we're at. And, you know, you got to kind of figure out which tricks you want to do where and who you're in with and coordinate tricks there. So this is actually probably one of the hardest shows I've ever done, racing or, you know, competitions, just because there is so much to remember, you know, and if you mess up one thing, you don't want to land on one of your friends or something. So it gets right. stressful. And so what's the process like when you rehearse, you know, a new, a new routine here? You break it down into individual tricks and then string them together. How do you turn the, that into a whole... A routine. Um, rehearsals is actually the hardest part of this tour. It's you know we do two weeks and pretty much going scene by scene. You know we'll rehearse one scene one day and one scene the next day. So we have the whole first act and we'll go through the first act and we start switching. And I honestly don't even start planning the tricks till like the last couple days. Like tonight we'll be doing a full show run through and that's when I'll kind of start to go through my tricks because I know what I can do. Mm -hmm. But it's I want to make sure I've memorized all my lines where I'm going. You know because sometimes we're not jumping back or sometimes we are. And, you know, I don't want to be thinking about tricks and where I'm supposed to be going, so I kind of just ride the first week or so. Of it. So, what was the first thing you thought when you heard there were going to be Shaolin monks involved I, I in this show? I was pretty pumped to hear about the Shaolin monks. You know, we've always had dancers, we've had some acrobats and stuff like uh -huh. that, but the Shaolins, they gave us a little preview of what they do, man, and it's awesome. They're, they're pretty crazy. So, do you get to interact with them? Do you have any like acting or fighting moments yeah, where you're interacting yeah, for with sure. them? Sure, we incorporate them and with what we do. You know, they do their stuff for a while and then. Actually, at the end of the show, they try and capture me, and Twitch, the leader of the other team, he has to come over and save me and stuff, so it's pretty cool. That's fun. So, uh, what's the craziest moment that you personally uh, are in, in the show? Uh, in the show, the craziest thing for me is at the very end of the show, we end with a four-wide backflip. We have uh, five of our ramps are all put together, and there's pretty much two on two ramps and two on two ramps, so it's like if you move over a foot on either side, you're hitting your buddy mid-air upside down, so... That's nuts. It scares me a little bit, but that one's funny. No, it wakes you up, makes you feel young again. All right, last question. Uh, what's the city that you're most excited about visiting on this tour coming up? Um, I'd say the city I'm most excited about is probably New Orleans. Um, last year was my first time there on this tour. And it was awesome, man. The show was sold out. The crowd was awesome. The city is awesome. So I hope we can go back there and replicate it, have another sold out crowd, and have a good time down there. Uh, Mickey Diamond. Cool. Um, so what does a stunt coordinator do on a show like this? Give him a little background. Uh, well, um, 
I've been along from the beginning and um, more or less a lot of the set design I'm responsible for um, the shapes and, and the placement of obstacles that the guys ride on hmm. um, and how and where it fits in the show hmm. um, their movements um, with each other as well as with the other performers um, like where they go on the obstacles mm -hmm. and what's around it to keep them as clear as possible from danger. Now I know in, in theaters and theme parks a lot of set design now is all done virtually in the computer. Do you do a lot of pre-vis or is it still old school uh, in um, terms of the design? Uh, it's done with 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 CAD and, and existing um, I don't know. We, we've got a lot of stuff that's been saved over mm -hmm. the years for specific shapes mm -hmm. for this uh, the, a size of jump that's this big in such mm -hmm. a small area. Yeah. So a lot of stuff's already been, you know, we've we've got a a template. Mm -hmm. um, each building though offers a new challenge because the floors aren't always 85 by 240. Mm -hmm. you know, they vary. Um, corner areas, the placement of backstage and the passage between the floor and, and backstage mm -hmm. can be on the door on the left side, right side, center. So you've got to kind of design a minimum footprint and then be able to adjust it as you move it around the country for each particular location? Yes. Or? Um, okay. we, have, we have obstacles on the floor that um, are more a fixed unit together mm -hmm. and others that can be adjusted in or out or uh, sideways back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really rocket science by any means, <laughs> but it's, um, it's just knowing what is the best solution for wherever we're at. Yeah. And, um, they're, they're motorcycles. and. Yeah. and and humans are riding them, so they're subject to have an accident at any any moment. Yeah. Um, even on the best condition. So tell me a little bit about the kind of uh, safety features that you design into the sets to uh, help mitigate that. Um, it's more it's more about for me. It has been more about giving them a, a platform to perform some tricks and and um, stunts that are not at the extreme maximum of their skill ability but mm -hmm. something that looks extremely good mm -hmm. at a little bit easier um, effort to, mm -hmm. to accomplish that. Um, it's not so much about putting padding here or there, it's about giving them um, what they need to do the stunt mm -hmm. and then making it as easy as it, it as it can be is there and then offering places for them to have wiggle room in case of uh, not doing it perfect they is, can step out instead of is there a difference between how you would design a set for a show that's got to be repeated every night versus like something that would be designed for an X Games competition absolutely um, uh, there you're expecting you're expecting success and failure in the mm -hmm. same moment and mm -hmm. Um, we're a show that, that wants to see everything that that might be just at that that edge of going over your head as mm -hmm. your ability and, and getting lucky. Um, we try to manufacture as much awe-inspiring stuff without expecting mm -hmm. it to be like a gamble. Mm -hmm. uh, it's once they leave and they hit the jump, it's up to them what they do. Um, I just try to offer as much room for them to do it as they, they can, then I can get them, give them. Sure. Some buildings are harder than others, um, and some I'd rather not be in at times, but we, we, we have pluses and minuses wherever we go. Um, typically we iron all those things out before we go somewhere. And, um, Mm. But some more more of a challenge than others. Can you tell me a little about the floor that we're standing on? The material kind of feels like what they use in playgrounds these days. What what is this that we're? Uh... Um, it's a it's a type of astroturf that you might have at a like a, a football game. Only this actual surface is more like a, uh, an abrasive. Um, I don't know. It's almost industrial mm. grit. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's not soft. I mean, if you were to fall on it, it's going to scratch you and take mm -hmm. your skin off a little bit. But 
this is our um, our going on our fourth season, our, our fifth tour, mm -hmm. and it is still standing up. Amazing. Holds up pretty well, yeah. And motorcycles are ripping up and down on it all throughout the weekend. Yeah. Just for two weeks for rehearsals. So. Sure. I imagine the set takes a lot of wear and tear. I mean, you constantly yeah. got to be inspecting it and. Uh, we try to package it into a, a nice um, truckload. Mm -hmm. um, we use aluminum on most everything, so it's light, and we can manage it with mostly man manpower and a few forklifts to build and to to uh, load up. Um, it does take a beating, and we have to um, we have to repair it. Like mostly at the end of the year, we'll refurbish it or redesign a few things. These two obstacles behind me are brand new. Um, we've we've only got so much room to have everybody out on the floor at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple performance platforms that also the riders can ride underneath, and um, they're new. And I really um, have a lot of hope for them in the future. We're going to have a lot more we can do with them down the road. Um, and they also opened up some space, gave the performers a safe zone. As mm -hmm. well as the other riders, the riders ride up on there, and um, so it's got a a cool dynamic for the trials riders that mm -hmm. are the you know, more or less the, uh, the I don't know the, the wire walkers of mm -hmm. our shows, so to speak, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, makes them a little more dynamic, uh, more um, visible to mm -hmm. um, the crowd as it's hard to beat a freestyle guy doing a backflip over right. a 75 foot gap over 30 foot in the air, you know? Um, we have a little bit of everything and um, yeah, it continues to improve. This is the latest um, evolution of this show and um, I know there's, a, there's, there's only so much you can do, um, mm. but we're, we're having new ideas now because of the things that we've done to change and, and um, you know, yeah, it's been a lot of money and everybody's got to really be behind it and then once you've got it, then you've got to prove it and develop it and um, so far so good with everything new that we've got here today.